Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I have something for you that is truly wonderful and that you may not even know exists. In fact, this is the rarest production knife I've ever had in the channel. In fact, it is so rare that it was never even produced. I had heard mentions of this knife in the inky shadows of knife forums. You know, hushed whispers here and there, and at times I'd, I'd ask myself, okay, is somebody pulling my leg here? Is this actually a myth? I, you know, am I just chasing ghosts in the fog? But until one day, a viewer of mine named Don reached out to me and offered to me, loan me one of these rare, wonderful, and terrible beasts. And so today, I have on my table something very, truly special. The Columbia River Knife and Tool Sebenza. That's right. This is the CRKT Sebenza. This is a fully authorized sort of thing. Uh, in fact, a little bit of history here. In the, the, the mid-90s, around 1995, CRKT went up to Chris Reeve Knives and proposed a collaboration. They would make an inexpensive Sebenza and uh, th th then sell it out there in the world. And th th they were game, I guess, over at CR uh, Chris Reeve Knives. Uh, and then so CRKT went out and made a bunch of prototypes and even went so far as to distribute them to salespeople figuring that they would want to be selling these little guys. And then the prototypes were taken over to Chris Reeve at Chris Reeve Knives for approval. And as the legend goes, Chris Reeve basically said, uh, eh, no, LOL, no, 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 no. And the entire project was canceled. And all that remained of this wonderful and terrible species are a few sales samples one of which is this little guy right here. And all of this, by the way, was confirmed to me by Tim Reeve, who declined to add any additional detail, but seemed to find the whole thing pretty damned uh, amusing. And in fact, um, we have something that's just... This is a really amusing knife in a bunch of levels, not only because CRKT made a Sebenza, but because this is a plastic frame lock. That's right, this is a knife whose body is made entirely of plastic, but has the Reeve integral lock, this frame lock. That's, in and of itself, something that's pretty fascinating. But another thing that's kind of cool is that Don sent along pictures of the letter that was given out to CRKT salespeople about this particular knife. The samples of the Sebenza you have received, this is dated January 31st, 1995. The samples of the Sebenza you have received are prototypes. Rather than delay your samples until finished production is available, we have modified these early pre-production samples in order that you can begin booking orders on this Red Heart series <laughs> immediately. And then says the appearance and functions are very close to correct. It's critical that you're familiar with changes that are going to be made in order to answer any questions dealers might have. Internal improvements are being made to further enhance the strength of the frame and the Reeve integral locking on, or I'm sorry, it just says integral locking. And you know, that. so again, that makes it very clear that what this is, is a prototype. This is not what was going to ship in CRKT's Wildest Fantasies, where Chris Reeve said this was okay. Um, and then it goes on to highlight some issues that are going on in these prototypes. Things like, we will achieve the solid snapping sound when the integral lock engages, much like that of the small Sebenza prototypes. Uh, the sample you have received may not have the sound that the consumer equates to quality, which is actually in and of itself kind of cool, because it means that knife companies know that people love that sound. People make fun of me for mentioning it all the time, but you know what? Hey, look, I'm not the only one. So that's kind of cool. And then gives um, some other issues that are going on there. The blade may or may not seat completely into the blade channel. This will be corrected. The blade may drop freely from the flame. The uh, detent hole, and it's true, indeed, the detent on this guy is not particularly good. Um, but the detent hole will be enlarged slightly to allow it to drop in there. The pocket clip will be improved. The edges are very rough. Yes, indeed they are. And we had uh, comments on the sharp tip of the thumb stud. And this is, this is kind of excellent because people People complained about the sharp tip of the thumb stud on Chris Reeve as well. Uh, Sebenza thumb is a real thing. And so that's that's pretty hilarious. And then they actually included a uh, an Allen key to un, uh, do anything, uh, to make any adjustments you need to. And then they say, although it may seem like a large number of adjustments that are need to be made on this series, please rest assured that they are all minor and easy remedied. Easily remedied. Wow, I can't talk today. This thing is scrambling my ability to talk properly. But that's that's pretty amazing. And so, given the fact that this is a prototype, given that they were planning to make a bunch of changes to it either, and so it seems like even they didn't think it was their best work at the time, um, I'm, I can't do an actual review. And let's face it, it's an older plastic knife. I don't know that I can trust the material to hold up, and I wouldn't want to injure a very, very rare knife by actually carrying it and using it. So instead, 
Uh, luckily, though, Don has given me permission to take the little guy apart. And so let's go ahead and take a closer look specifically at how they decided they were going to make a plastic frame lock. Fundamentally, the fasteners are actually pretty reminiscent of what uh, Chris Reeve is using in real Sebenzes. Get these very long screws with a nice deep Allen key head on them, which is uh, something I appreciate very much. Uh, it's one of the very best parts of the Sebenza lineup, or frankly, Chris Reeve in general, is the excellent fasteners. But then once you take those fasteners out, you can see here that, well, practically speaking, it is a three-scale design, just like the... Uh, or a two-scale design, that is, three-piece, just like the original Sebenza. Although in this case, this little guy here, they've molded in a backspacer rather than having standoffs. And then that's kind of where the, uh, the similarities end. You can see here that the washers, at least the washers that are on this guy, are these very, very ad hoc sort of hand-cut Teflon numbers. I don't know whether these have been replaced after, the, uh, after it left the factory. I kind of hope so. Or whether they were just shipped that way for lack of a better fastener. But still... That's a little bit ugly, and we can actually see here that they have raised plastic prominences that would function kind of in the same way that the washers on the regular Sebenza, or I'm sorry, Sebenza 21, are there to support it. Another really interesting thing is take a look at the pivot here. You've got the metal portion, which is just a Chicago screw, and then surrounding it, you have a fixed plastic area, which is kind of paying tribute to the, um, the, the Sebenza 21 pivot bushing, uh, which is a, a piece of metal that's kind of sandwiched in between the scales around which the blade is able to rotate. And that's how a Sebenza 21, you should be able to crank it all the way down and it will be perfectly smooth. It's because of that pivot bushing in there. And so they've recreated it in plastic. The stop pin is really interesting because there isn't a stop pin. All that there is is this Chicago screw here, which is inside a sort of jacket of plastic so that when the knife is all the way open, what's happening here is that the, the knife blade is being stopped up here by this area and then the frame on the other side here. And so uh, this is, well, it's a bold move. We'll say that 100% because the stop pin, which really can't move or else you can have Loctite issue or uh, lockup issues is made entirely out of plastic, which is interesting. But speaking of entirely out of plastic, the real interesting part of this knife, in my opinion, is the, uh, the, the lock side here and the frame lock. They have made a Reeve integral lock just like the, an actual Sebenza has, um, except they've done it out of plastic. And they've done a couple of things to make that, I think, a little more reasonable than it might sound initially. Um, this is not entirely plastic. What we can see here is that there's this little chunk right here. There, there's a piece of exposed metal, maybe some kind of a brass or bronze or something along those lines, that goes in this lock bar here, and I'm not actually 100% sure how far it goes into here. I, I can't get a sense by looking at it of how deep into the lock bar it goes. It may even go all the way through. But this provides a stiffness to this lock spring that you wouldn't get if it were just floppy plastic. I mean, the material itself has a little bit of give to it, whereas the lock bar itself doesn't so much. Maybe a little bit more towards the tip, which makes me think this is only going part of the way in there. But anyways, so that's an interesting approach here. They've done the actual part that needs to bend and that needs to hold spring tension out of metal, so it will hold spring tension. That's kind of smart. They're also using the clip here um, to push further down on the lock bar because as you pull the lock bar out, you're forcing the clip up as well. And so by having the clip securely anchored and having the clip also basically applying pressure on here, we continue to have downward springy force on the lock, which is really important for a frame lock to be, well... At remotely safe. Then finally, the lock bar interface up at the top here, the lock interface that is, is actually metal. You can see that there is an area up here, I'm trying to highlight this here, you can see that there is an area where there is uh, actually, oh come on there, there you go, where you get a different piece of reflection and this feels to me like it is some sort of actual metal on there. And if we look at it face on, and I'm not going to, you know, push it too hard, but you can see that there is an area of some kind of exposed metal here. And this is the surface right here that actually touches the, uh, the, the, the tang of the blade. And if we look at the tang of the blade, we can see, there we go, a little tiny bit of uh, detail and a little bit of wear uh, where this uh, lock interface has been hitting the blade over and over as this has been opened over the years. And so, again, it's not the case that this is steel up against plastic, which would easily wear that away. No, they thought about that, and so they made this portion out of metal, as well as the direct interface to the blade out of metal, so it won't go away. I don't know what kind of metal it is. Sure doesn't look like titanium, but it's something. The other thing that that does is it allows them, come on, focus please, 
it allows them to use a detent ball. Um, because if you just press a detent ball into plastic, it's either going to press further down or pop it. It's not reliable, but if you put it into this metal chunk here, you're going to do a okay -OK, and so you can actually have a real detent. And so at some level, although it is a plastic frame lock, which is uh, very, very weird to me as a knife guy and not something that inspires huge amounts of confidence they have done it in such a way that i think it's they they thought it through as much as a plastic frame lock can be thought through and that's actually that's kind of neat to see somebody somebody very clearly sat down and thought okay we have a price point and we need to make an integral lock knife out of plastic to hit that price point and this is the set of solutions that they chose um and that's like i said that is kind of neat let's be real here one other little area of authenticity it is very easy to pinch these watches uh washes between the bushing and the blade in the uh in this crkt model here as well so uh yeah oh yo yo very very interesting set of design decisions and design constraints that were made here um, one other thing to highlight is serrations. Oh, yeah, that's right. A serrated small sebenza made out of plastic. It just doesn't get much better than that. So we'll put this little guy back to actually, no, I'm sorry, it gets significantly better than that. This is, this is not so much what I would say is good. But at another level, though, it's not so bad. You know, I posted this on Instagram and immediately, you know, a chorus sprung out of plastic frame lock. You got to be kidding me. Uh, that's so, so unsafe. How could they even consider it? But the thing is, actually handling this guy and given, I haven't been hard using it because it's super rare and it's old plastic. So it's not really great uh, in terms of uh, being representative anyways. But that said, actually holding this guy in my hand, I don't feel like this knife is particularly unsafe. The lockup on it is absolutely 100%, 100%. Uh, the lockup is quite literally 100%. It goes all the way and then it touches the other scale, which means that this either is made out of spec, you know, because ideally the frame lock should be hitting, you know, someplace around 50% here, like on an actual Sebenza, but in this case, it's all the way over there. And so it's not acting like a conventional frame lock. It's more instead like in order for the blade to close, this piece needs to not be where it is. Now the blade can close. But so long as that piece is where it is, the blade can't. There's a little bit of vertical blade play, which is to be expected with 100% lock up in a plastic stop pin. But again, like I said, I don't feel like this is incredibly over the top unsafe um, because look, it's not going anywhere. And in fact, I can even do a light tap here and it's not going to come loose particularly. I think for a majority of everyday tasks, this would probably be just fine. I am not advocating for plastic frame locks. I do not think this is a particularly beautiful idea, but I wanted to take a second to address people's immediate, oh my God, that's unsafe. No, I think if it was done right, and I think they were on their way to doing it right here, it could have absolutely been safe. So, you know, back off there. Not every lock needs to have 50-pound barbells hung off of it. Cold steel. Oh, sorry. Terrible cough there. So, anyways, um, that's the Chris Reeve... I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't even say CRKT Sebenza. This is the Columbia River Knife and Dual Sebenza. Uh, a knife that never quite made it to production. And, by the way, the font... Can we comment on the font here? Oh, yeah, the font. That's, that's just nice. And then, oh, oh, boy... Uh, anyways, so this is a fascinating little bit of knife making history. Um, it is the only plastic frame lock that I am aware of, and I think perhaps for good reason. Even if you can do it well, I don't think the knife community is quite ready for it. <laughs> And I'm not sure the plastic world is either. And it's an interesting cautionary tale. Um, you know, something for uh, new makers to keep in mind. That not every collaboration is necessarily going to be a good idea. And for a really high-end company like Chris Reeve Knives to make a collaboration that was this decidedly low-end, I think would have landed badly in a lot of ways. So Chris made a really good call there. But anyways, um, yeah, so this is really, really neat. I want to thank again my buddy Don for sending this along. Give me a chance to handle this guy. And I hope you found it interesting. They even kept the positioning hole, by the way. That's, that's pretty excellent. But anyways, I hope you found this interesting here, as interesting as I did, um, that you learned an interesting bit of history lesson, and that you uh, aren't going to be making any plastic frame locks in the future. But mostly, I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, and that none of your projects are canceled in the near future. Bye now.